I grew up just outside of Washington, D.C. before I came to the U.K. to go to university where I studied law um, and uh, loved that. Then I uh, worked for a church for a year and then I went back to, to uh, university to study theology for a few years. And then I led a church for uh, five, five years uh, up in the northeast of England before I started a creative agency. Uh, with uh, my wife and father, and I then pivoted into software as a service and uh, and got more and more involved in contributing back to Nuxt, which was the framework we used at the time. Uh, and then when, when I uh, ended up shutting down the, the SaaS startup, uh, I was just asked to uh, focus full-time on maintaining Nuxt, and I've done that ever since. So it's... Uh, been a bit of a weird, a weird journey, but I certainly love, lo- loved every step of the way. Leading a church, church leader versus uh, being a lawyer, um, I felt well. Actually, I wonder if I'm, I'm making that decision just based on what I think I'd be better at um, doing and doing well, or whether actually I was, I was letting other people's views of me influence that. How do mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. other people think about me? How do I come to terms with that? Um, do I feel like Part of my life up to now has been a waste of time. Do I feel like, do, do you know, there's lots and lots of, of questions uh, along those lines, which are, are tricky. Um, so, well, I, I feel like we'd have an hour long podcast just discussing exactly. five these minutes yeah. in, and we're talking about <laughs> yeah, sort of deep, me, deep like, questions of, of uh, that was sort of full set. Oh my god, value. taking a step back, making it a little more. Uh, lighthearted. Um, are there skills that you built along the way while in law, while doing theology, uh, that have been, you know, transferred to how you manage the community today within open source? So, I mean, absolutely, I do think that there are there are skills and things that are relevant sort of across um, those different career paths. So, uh, I mean, so yes, that's one of the things that you, you spotted there that that um, in in church life, a lot of what the, the life, I mean, a, a church isn't an institution. A church is a group of people, mm-hmm. uh, I believe. Exactly. And, uh, and so when you're thinking about what a church does, it's not that someone says, this is what we do. And, you know, it's not like that. It's, an, it's a body. It's an organic uh, thing, a group of people who um, work together and um, and I think there's a similarity to open source work. My mm-hmm. view of open source is very much that it is about mutual gift. So mm-hmm. main t- I give, and I also receive other gifts from people. So um, those gifts look like a lots, lots of different things. So uh, other people give to the... I mean, I felt this from the day I was um, contributing to Nuxt, uh, you know, building my SaaS my startup. You know, I'm g- giving back... Uh, bug fixes and features and other people are also giving in bug fixes and features and we all benefit i guess this is actually goes quite quite to the sort of algora uh, question and <laughs> concept we're coming up to nuxt 4 as a release and so um a lot of what we're what we're talking about uh, as a team um thinking about is what are the deliberate um api changes that we're going to make for nuxt 4 uh, because uh, we we don't we don't want those to be big and we don't want those to be difficult to migrate to. I should probably say what Nuxt is. Um, it's a framework for building web applications um, with Vue.js as the front end library uh, and built on Nitro as the serverless framework that uh, governs the back end. Um, it has a real focus on developer experience and also extensibility. So we have this concept of of a package um, uh, called called a Nuxt module. So uh, a function, effectively, that can hook into different parts of Nuxt's build uh, process and even add runtime code or, uh, or change behaviors or defaults or whatever. And that is incredibly powerful. So Nitro, for example, was originally implemented as a module for Nuxt. Um, and I think almost everything you could do, you, you could do with the module. So that means that people can build their own integration. today. Um, we uh, hit an all-time high in terms of um, projects and sessions uh, using Nuxt. So we, we have anonymous uh, opt-in telemetry, mm-hmm. um, which just tells us that was a, 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 session, a dev session started with Nuxt. And so today we had over 
10,400 uh, projects um, using Nuxt, so the oh. dev command was started. So that's pretty cool. I was really excited to see that. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's healthy. Um, there, there are a good number of folks using it. I uh, stream often on Twitch and um, just random stuff, uh, coding, fixing bugs, creating new projects. Um, so that might be worth uh, mentioning um, if, you, if, you, if you want to. I also have a YouTube channel where I post the, the like, past stream. So I've just run um, Nuxi in it. Um, and it's created this, this folder, which has got um, sort of the bare bones. Uh, and actually, most of the stuff here is just uh, infrastructure. The only code we have is app.view. I'll start the dev server, which powers most of what Nux does in the background. The, um, the welcome component renders this. But it has some props, so you can actually change some things about this. And you get uh, type safe access uh, to that. So create a test component. Uh, hi there. And if we go back uh, and use that test component, we could, well, one, uh, your editor knows that it exists. Um, and when you put it in, it sort of immediately works. So Nuxt will automatically import that component only where it's used in your app. We also have this Nitro server, um, which is, mm -hmm. um, which uh, like, like Nuxt uses file-based routing. So you can do stuff like, um, we'll call it foo. We could create an API endpoint. Um, and again, we could return something, some value. Um, and you can actually access that uh, with, with a, this dollar sign fetch utility which will actually be type hinted for you. So you, you can fetch that. So in fact, in the server rendering lifecycle, when you're doing fetches to your own API, um, we don't mm -hmm. even hit the network layer. We'll just make an internal um, request uh, and it will emulate the network layer, which basically makes this possible to be incredibly fast, um, at which is built for serverless. Next modules list. Um, so this actually has all of the modules that I was talking about, and you can filter and look through those. It's just quite, quite handy guide. Um, you can see a little bit more also about the deployment providers we support. Again, most of these, many of these will be zero config, and it's not an exhaustive list. Um, the whole aim is that we want to support lots and lots of features in a um, cross-platform compatible way. So no lock-in, next three issues as well. If you want to get stuck in, um, you can pick some of those. Um, if you're interested in contributing to Nux, I actually have uh, mm -hmm. a blog article on how you might get started, um, uh, including some links to um, issue searches that you could have a look at in terms of what you might be interested in doing. And I will also say that if you want to, um, I have a, an open calendar invite. You can book any time, 10 minutes with me, um, if you want to get involved um, in Nux or in open source. I would always be happy to, have to chat and help if I can.